Hello Buccaneers, we are at Little River Inn in Mendocino and today we're going to show you the fun things you can do in Fort Bragg. You can order breakfast here at this hotel with the order form. You have to specify the delivery window and then choose the breakfast you want. There's also sides and beverages. And then it says please clip outside your door before 10 p.m. the night before. All right? And then when the morning comes, you get breakfast. For breakfast, I got the Eggs Benedict. I'm having breakfast out here in the patio and I got pancakes, egg, and bacon. We are at Liquid Fusion Kayaking and we're going on a kayaking excursion. Liquid Fusion Kayaking offers classes and tours that are personal, educational, and fun. Mr. Jeff is our tour guide today and he's teaching us the basics of kayaking. So brother and I are riding in one kayak and I hope it's not like a, a mistake because because hopefully we're strong and we'll see. Along the way, Mr. Jeff is telling us about the plants and animals, and he pointed out an osprey nest on top of that tree. All right, we're, we're maybe 30, 30 minutes in, and so far we're holding up okay, uh, but we're not really recording much so that we can focus on paddling, so uh, right now I'm making, right now I'm doing all the paddling so that brother can record. Do you wanna get wet? No, I already got wet, okay? We bumped the riverbank, but it's no big deal because we can easily paddle out. The water here is so clear. Okay, so we're like maybe 45 minutes in, and uh, the whole time we've been going against the current, and I'm getting a little tired of my arch but I guess it's because we have two little kids here. And, uh, but the good thing is that, but the good thing is that on the way back we'll be going with the current. We're gonna try to catch up to Mr. Jeff so we can bump his kayak. So we're on the way back now. Brother and I decided to try to bump the instructor multiple times, but each time we get close to him, like he 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 just goes away because he's super fast. On this trip, we saw wildlife such as an osprey, a mama deer and baby deer, and harbor seals. And that is the kayaking experience. Uh, hmm, I'm not sure how how what our mileage was, but we definitely went. We saw a few harbor seals. They're so cool. They like half pop out of the water and then they go back in. And uh, oh yeah, and we spotted deers, which I was not expecting. I was only expecting marine stuff. My arms are kind of tired at the end, but I think if I went with an adult, my arms wouldn't be as tired. But I mean, they're not like too bad. So overall, it was a fun experience, a great workout. My favorite part was bumping all the kayaks. Yeah, our tour guide said we were allowed to bump him. Uh, so, so we did a few times, but a lot of times like we approach and he, he pulled away. That was funny. And it, I don't know how much footage we got from this, but if we didn't get much, sorry. It, it's just like when we're kayaking, we need momentum and we only have two hands. And we were trying to go fast to see a lot of things. Our next stop is the Guest House Museum. Built in 1892, this was the private residence of the first mayor of Fort Bragg. This is a centennial quilt from 1989 because the city was founded in 1889. Paul Bunyan is a mythical American character. They say his boots made the Great Lakes and this is his original axe. This is actually a waffle maker. I don't know how. Maybe you put the waffle, uh, this waffle, what's it called? Waffle syrup? Now we're going up to the second floor. 
These are some of the artifacts found at the glass beach, which we'll be going to later in this trip. Fort Bragg used to be a lumber town, so this museum has a lot of that type of thing. So this tree bark was actually peeled by hand. And I wonder how many splinters Oh, there's the scum train. We'll be riding that later today. And that is the Guest House Museum. It was pretty cool. I liked how there was a lot of history about uh, the lumber. Well, we only had like 20 minutes here, so I guess if we stay longer, we could read more of the signs to learn about the history. But basically, the gist of it is that Fort Bragg used to be a lumber town. Yeah, if you're in Fort Bragg, I suggest you stop by and spend some time here so that you can learn more. Now we are at the Mendocino Coast Model Railroad and Historical Society. This organization builds model train layouts depicting scenes from the railroads that served the redwood mills along Mendocino Coast. And that is the Mendocino Coast Model Railroad and Historical Society. I like how you can watch the little trains go all around the train tracks, both inside and outside the building. Also, this is one of the most developed model train sets that I've seen. Like, they even have cotton stuff for the clouds. On to the next stop. This is, just imagine we're moving on the train to the next stop. Now we're going on the skunk train. Such a strange name. Why me the stinky train? This train transports passengers through the redwood forest of Mendocino County with departures from Fort Bragg and Willits. We just boarded the skunk train and you can choose to be outside or inside and you can move around at any point, but right now we want to stand outside. Also, did you know that they're gonna release skunks? during the train ride, and if you've been bad, you'll get sprayed. Just kidding. All aboard! It's going really fun. We're passing a cemetery. So today we'll be riding the train for 25 minutes to Glen Blair. I think it's in the middle of the Redwood Forest. And then we'll be stopping there for 25 minutes and riding 25 minutes back. So this is called the Skunk Train because back then the train burned a mixture of gasoline and other oils and it smelled really bad. And the locals could smell it before they actually saw the train so they called it the Skunk Train. We have arrived at Glen Blair. So we just got off the train and we're going to keep hiking until my timer rings and then we'll turn back because if we don't miss if we don't make the train I don't know what's going to happen. So we have to make it back to the train in 10 minutes and we're like in the middle of the woods. So we might record, we might not. Maybe our next scene will be safely on the trip. Now we're gonna check out the inside of the train. And that is the skunk train. It was pretty cool. I like how once you reach your destination, get 25 minutes to uh, explore, what's the place called? Glen Blair. The ride was pretty cool and my favorite part was standing outside watching the view. And 25 minutes is enough to explore some of the forest. On to the next stop. The next attraction is the Noyo Center for Marine Science. This is a place for innovative marine research and education and features a 73 foot blue whale skeleton. This is a touchless interactive exhibit. Oh, I want to do about sea lions. Alright, there we go. 
This is the skull of an Alaskan walrus. And that tusk is my arm like Attaching a piece of bailey. And then you can feel all the different Oh, this is I have never touched a sea lion skull before. This is an orca eyeball that has been preserved. This is an orca skeleton and the orca was found dead at the beach in 2015. He or she died from entanglement in a crab pot line. And that eye that we saw back there, that was from the orca as well. Now we're gonna check out the ocean immersion dome. Wow. Look! There's a scuba dive. Oh, wow! Lastly, we're checking out the touch table. That is the Noyo Center for Marine Science. My favorite part was uh, the dome, uh, where you can dive into many different uh, sections to see what's all around the ocean. I also like the dome because of the echo and it, the place where you could touch all the ocean objects, that was cool too. This little museum is free to visit, they do accept donations, and it should take you like 15 minutes to see the whole thing. It's time to check out the Sea Glass Museum. Oh yes! This museum offers a range of colored sea glass and a gift shop. Let's check out the black light room. There's a ton of sea glass that glow in the dark. And that is the Sea Glass Museum. My favorite part was the glow in the dark room because you can see many sea glass that glow in the dark. I liked seeing all the different colors of sea glass and I was also surprised to find out that here at the glass beach taking the sea glass is legal because I thought it was illegal, but apparently it's legal. Uh, well, anyways, when we go to the glass beach, I hope there are still some remaining and we're probably not going to take any. Our next stop is Triangle Tattoo Studio and Museum. Our final stop is Glass Beach. I found two pieces of sea glass, but I'm only taking one. That way, there's still some left. I think red is a rare color. In the pictures on Google, this beach is like filled with glass, but then the, like the recent reviews and stuff are saying uh, that there's not as much glass on the beach now since people are taking them. I'm not going to take them, even though it's legal, because that could that be contributing to the problem. But brother wants to take some, so whatever. I'm keeping this one, and there's many more for other people to look at and take. In this patch, there's like really tiny pieces of sea glass mixed with other materials. And if you lower the camera and take a picture, then you can be tricked into thinking it's a whole beach full of sea glass. And I think that's what the pictures on Google might be doing. And that is Glass Beach. It is very cool. I like how you can look at all the sea glass and collect them, but don't collect too many of them. I'm actually surprised that we found this many because I thought they would like all be taken. I mean, we're not going to keep all of this. So yeah, if you come here basically in addition to enjoying this nice scenery, you can go on a little treasure hunt. That's it for our day. Stay tuned for more videos. Bye!